Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in the Resolved series and I have brought forward to you a slightly different looking problem, uh, especially for JE aspirants. Students are usually comfortable with uh, current circuits with voltage sources, so we are having a current source. It's not a very difficult question, but it's like a typical one. Uh, this particular question contains more than one theorem of electrical circuits that we are supposed to apply and I'll try my best to actually take forward the solution in a very basic manner so that everyone can understand. So please do stay till the end of the video so that you can actually uh, tackle these kind of questions even in the future. Okay, so let's move ahead. This is the formal wording of the question. So in case you have not yet seen this question in the community post, so I would request you to pause the video here, have a try for five to 10 minutes and then do come back for the solution and the concept explanation for this particular part. Okay, so I'm going ahead with the formal wording. An ideal current source of eight ampere is used as shown in a circuit. Okay, so here you have a current source. Ideal means it's not having any um, um, resistance in these wires that are connected. For what value of R that is here, that external resistance, will it receive maximum power? So what's the value of this resistance capital R so that it actually receives the maximum power is the situation that you are supposed to answer. Okay, so let's move forward. So. Uh, I would request you to actually watch this video in case you are new to this channel, you should watch the video based on the Thevenin's equivalent that I have already produced under the series of Pathfinder solutions. I've tackled the concept and also a problem from the Pathfinder textbook of current electricity. Okay, so the link of this particular video is in the description below or in the I button above. So watching this video uh, would give you an idea of what I'm trying to talk about in the further parts of this video. Okay, so let's move forward. Assuming that you have watched it, you should realize that in that particular video that I said that between any two points, let's call these two points as A and B, if there is a mesh of a circuit containing lot of current sources and voltage sources, then you can replace this entire mesh with a single voltage source having some internal resistance. So this entire thing you could see is replaced with a non-ideal cell, a voltage and internal resistance. So this is nothing but the Thevenin's equivalent as discussed in the previous video that you have watched. Okay, so which means if this particular circuit is this circuit, then it, uh, it is as good as asking what should be this value of capital R in terms of this small r so that the maximum power is delivered. Okay, so that I think if you remember is from a maximum power theorem. Okay, so if you have any um, non-ideal cell connected across a load of resistance capillar and you're uh, allowed to vary this capillar from zero to infinity, then for what value of this capital R in terms of small r do you get a maximum power? The theorem states that it should be actually a condition of resistance matching or impedance matching. This capital R, when it is equal to this value of small r, this receives the maximum power. Okay, so this is a basic standard theorem. You can search in Google or internet for the theorem's proof. It's pretty simple. You are supposed to calculate the current, write the power as function of r, use calculus to find the maxima, and you'll end up getting the value of capital R equal to small r. So now it boils down to finding out the value of this small r. So let's rewind a bit. He's asked us capital R so that maximum power is there. So it's as good as by Thevenin's equivalent calculating the internal resistance of this mesh. Okay, right. So keeping that in mind, we'll move forward. How to find this small r? Okay, so there are two basic steps to find small r of any Thevenin's equivalent. Okay, right. Um, the way I look at it from the fundamentals is the two steps where first step we put the external load as infinite. Okay, right. So the value of capital R, assume it is infinite. What does that infinity mean? It means it's an open circuit. Infinite resistance means there's no way that the current is allowed to pass. So that means this is an open road. Uh, there's no traffic allowed for those electrons to flow. So then we find the value of VAB. So by putting open circuit and you find the voltage across this particular points, then it's called open circuit voltage. A nice little name, very easy to understand. Okay, so we call it VOC. The AB found when the R cap tends to infinity is called VOC. And that is pretty simple. If this is a hanging circuit without any connection made, I think voltage across this is nothing but this EMF. Okay, so that's why it's E. I think you can think about that. Next step is to put R tends to zero, the other extreme completely. So what is meant by R tending to zero? It means a short circuit, okay? There's no resistance at all. Then you find the value of current through this AB, okay, right? And we call that as short circuit current. So 
step one, we calculated open circuit voltage and then step two, short circuit current. And that was also pretty simple, right? So if this is a short circuit, right? The value of current flowing through this in single loop would be E by R. So the value of ISC, SC stands for short circuit will be E by R. And once you know these two values, this actually lets find little trick to find out the internal resistance of any cell. Okay, right. Open circuit voltage divided by short circuit current should give you the internal resistance. Okay, so, so that is what I'm going to use in the original circuit, finding out the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current to find small r, which should be equal to capital R. Everything is interconnected in four steps, as you could see here. Okay, so let's move forward. So step one, to find out the open circuit voltage across AB, as I ascertained in the previous page, I move this capital R to infinity. Okay, so this capital R when tends to infinity, this branch is gone. This is open. So I have not drawn that. So rest of the things, if they are working on their own in this imaginary circuit, remember, this is an imagination that we are considering one of the special cases of a R across AB is equal to infinity. Okay, so under that condition, when this 8 ampere is pumping current, and you see this branch and this branch are identical under that open circuit condition, right? So this is a series of one and three, and this is a series of three and one. So the four ampere will get divided equally in these two. So in that scenario, what should be the AB voltage? Simple Kirchhoff's rule, travel from A, go along this direction and meet B here, okay? So VA plus four minus 12 is equal to VB, a very simple little travel from A to B. So VAB under the open circuit condition comes out to be 8 volt. This is the open circuit voltage we found out. That's a step one, very simple one. So step two is the short circuit current. Okay, so which means I have to make this capital R tending to zero. So this blue little line now is connecting directly across AB. And just for my convenience, I'll draw this line in middle. Can you see that here? And this one, just to ensure that there is no clumsiness in the diagram, I'm putting it outside. So this eight ampere between these two points, I've connected it outside for my convenience. Again, the same little thing, a lot of things are written here, just follow my lead. First we'll solve this and then I'll go back to this, okay? So just watch this, this branch and this branch because of the short circuit wire are in parallel with each other. So this three and one are in parallel. So if someone asks you between C and D, that is across this current source, how much effective resistance is there? I think it would be easy for you to tell that three and one are parallel and this one and three are in parallel and then those two are in series with each other. So two times of one and three in parallel, which is three by two ohm. That means across this eight ampere, the net resistance in the short circuit condition is three by two ohm. So the value of potential difference across that should be current into resistance. Okay, so that should be 12 volt. That means across these two points under short circuit condition, 12 volt is there. Okay, and which means across each of these branches, that means from C to this entire thing is one point, right? So from C to here, equal voltage should be there and from here to here equal voltage. So if this entire thing is 12, then from C to A or C to B, it should be six volt. Okay, so if six volt has to drop across one, six ampere should flow. If six volt has to drop across three, two ampere should flow. And cross symmetry tells you that this should be two ampere and this also should be six ampere. So with six and two, how much should be the current flowing through the short circuit wire? Four ampere. So finally, after all this drama, you end up getting that the current flowing through this wire, which is essentially this wire under short circuit condition is four ampere. So step one, we got eight volt. Step two, we got four ampere. So finally, this one's thevenin's equivalent goes to this. And the value of the small r, which is VOC divided by SC is two ohm, which in turn should be the value of capital R for the maximum power theorem to be successful. So the final answer after all these steps, and this was not about just the question, it was learning about the different steps and fundamental concepts involved in this problem. Any of these steps could be your free, uh, final JE advanced examination question. Okay, so um, it's a very interesting one. I would request you to watch the original video of Temenence Equivalent again, which had the Pathfinder. The link is again in the uh, description below. So please make sure you do watch it. Okay. 
um, in case you want to go through the other resolved series questions where we generally resolve things which are not part of the textbooks and students don't know whom to ask. So that's the thing that this particular series specializes in. Apart from that, there are many other series which are running parallelly in this channel. Each one of them is definitely worth your time with over 150 videos that have produced till now. Okay, so I would request in case you are new to watch two or three videos daily whenever you are in breaks and definitely will start loving this channel and start getting something out of this. Okay, so please do like this video and share it with, you, with your peer groups in WhatsApp and Telegram and, and um, help me uh, grow my channel. Okay, so uh, liked videos are pushed by uh, YouTube algorithm to more uh, people in their recommendations and it, it would it would help me uh, with more subscribers okay so thanks for showing confidence and in case you have waited till the end of the video i would uh, heartfully thank you okay and see you in the next video with a all the more beautiful concept okay so thank you